Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome guys. Uh, so this video and uh, let's talk about this uh, burst and uh, polynomial and uh, Let's talk about uh, how burst and polynomial will uh, prove the wild trust approximation theory Okay, so uh, oh, By the way, this note is uh, what I originally did uh, Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so let's quickly define the burst and polynomial uh, B, V, N. So V can be 0 uh, up to N. 0? Okay. Uh, okay, should be 0 up to N. So uh, to be N choose V, X to the V, 1 minus X and minus V. Okay, so this is the, so given N, right? Given N, there will be N plus 1 polynomial. Okay, so uh, it's obviously that uh, B view and uh, B new n will uh, form the basis of the polynomial degree of a uh, polynomial with uh, variable x at most degree uh, uh, n, right? So uh, we will introduce uh, three lemma. So the first lemma is that uh, uh, you choose n, choose k, x, k, 1 minus n minus k, k to 0 to, uh, to 1 is uh, up to n is 1. Uh, this proof is very easy, just the uh, binomial uh, coefficient. So uh, if you don't know about binomial coefficient theorem, uh, I will put it here. So you can check it. And also, the if you uh, put k divided by n here, then uh, the, it will become x. Okay. So the proof is use, uh, just using uh, definition of binomial coefficient, and you expand it, become a minus 1, k minus 1. And you combine this, you get another x. Okay. So uh, I already write down details, so you can check, check it. Okay, and the second, uh, the third one, uh, uh, the third one I should, I think is uh, here. Okay, so third one is what we want to prove is that if you use x minus k divided by n squared and choose k, x k one minus x n minus k, then it will become x uh, times one minus x divided by n. Okay, so uh, this proof is uh, very uh, long, so uh, I, I mean, you, you guys can stop the, my video and watch the proof, right? But uh, I will not prove here. Uh, but this is the proof detail. So basically, you start from this binomial coefficient, and then you uh, let t equals x1 minus x, then you will be proved the first one and the second one. And then if you do the differentiation twice, then uh, you do the same thing, then you can prove the third one. Okay. Uh, so then uh, let's prove the famous uh, stone wire trust theorem. So basically, uh, what I want to prove is that uh, given a continuous function on the, fine, uh, on the 0, 1 interval, Okay, then there will be a polynomial function which can uh, approximate its f uh, by arbitrary uh, into arbitrary uh, error. Okay, so uh, the ideal proof is that you need to somehow construct such f of n, which is polynomial, but can approximate this f arbitrarily uh, close. Okay, so the idea is that uh, let's define this f of n to be f k divided by n b k and x k from zero to n. Okay, and the theorem says that f approach fn approach to f uniformly on 0 1 uh, s and goes to infinity and this is just why i say famous white trust approximation theorem uh, i learned this theorem uh, when i was uh, first in the uh, in the college so uh yeah i mean it's a very amazing theorem uh, when i first uh, hear about it. okay uh and uh, this is also my first video to prove this theorem so i will uh, introduce the another proof maybe in the future Okay, so uh, this proof is famous because uh, the bur the burst and polynomial can somehow just give you such polynomial as you construct. Okay, so uh, to prove this, uh, right, if you prove you want to prove f n minus f well uniformly, then uh, you def you just try to bound the error. Okay, so uh, f n minus f can be viewed as f k divided by b k minus f, and then you write you can write as this. Uh, uh, right. So this is just so because uh, at least. This equation, right? This equation tells you that sum of b k n is one, right? If you k from zero to n, right? So I can uh k from k to one. To, I can uh write this f as a f of x sum of b k n. I write it in two terms, and I use the uh triangular inequality to bound these two terms. So we know that f is a continuous function uh, on zero one, so it's uniform continuous. So that means for epsilon greater than zero, I can choose a delta, right? Such that uh, if x minus uh, minus one less than delta, then the, the result will be less than epsilon. Okay, and also I know that f is continuous on zero one, right? So f is bounded, right? F is bounded by f. by some uh, larger uh, by some number m. Okay, 
So uh, f and minus f, right, can be written as two two kind of terms, right? One is that x minus y less than f delta, and one is greater. So x minus k divided by n less than delta or greater or equal to delta. So there are two terms. Okay, so the first term can be bounded by epsilon, right? Because uh, I can I can make this epsilon and pull out uh, all the possible sum. So you become one, right? It become so epsilon. Uh, basically, sum of case you just you are summing k, right? But you are summing k such that x minus k divided by n less than delta, right? So this is can be bound as epsilon. And also for this one, uh, for a second term, right? This f is bounded by two m, right? Because f is bounded, so it becomes two m x minus k divided by n less or greater or equal to delta b k n. Okay, so the final difficult part is to bound the least term, right? And it's very uh, easy to bound because x minus k divided by n greater or equal to delta can written as a uh, sum over k one over delta square x minus k divided by n squared bkn uh, less or equal to okay so uh uh let's see right because you see uh this turn uh this x minus k divided by n greater or equal to delta so there's square divided by delta square must be greater than one right greater or equal to one so this turn is definitely less than this term. and i can pull out one over delta square and the rest of k right will be this uh third lemma which i just proved the third lemma is here, right? Tell you that the uh, first term polynomial bkn times x minus k divided by n square will can be uh interpret and uh can be b, uh, x can be less or equal to x one minus x divided by n. So this term is uh, x one minus x divided by n. Right? Definitely x is from zero one, right? So this term is uh less than one, so it's less than uh, delta square divided by n. So that means uh if you choose n should be arbitrary large, right? Then you can suppress these terms. You can suppress these terms. So you prove the original theory, right? Because for epsilon greater than zero, then the you you already you can find n which suppress these terms. So which basically is exactly this f n minus f uniformly on zero one as n goes to infinity. Okay, uh yeah, so that's a proof. Uh be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel. Thanks.